Hello there, Adam Bazalgett here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, the hip and leg movement in the downswing, confuses a lot of people. I'll flesh this out for you, give you three simple drills, and give you a mental approach I think will really help you. So very briefly, if you're new to this channel, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. Helps us build momentum, bring you free content. Also, check out the Scratch Golf Academy app at the App Store. Lots of fun training tools and ideas that help you with your golf game. Well, certainly not all great players do it the same way, but let's have a look at some generalizations. Watch the tree branches there next to Tiger Woods. You can see there's quite a weight shift there, so there's certainly some lateral movement, and as he does that, you'll see his trail knee and ankle bend in a little bit, as you will see not only bend there, but you'll see bend in his trail wrist. Lee Westwood on the other side, not only does he shift some weight, but he rotates his hips as well. Club comes a little from the inside, and watch as he rolls his right ankle, how the club stays nice and low through the ball for a foot or so. That's the sort of thing we're looking for. I plan to be out on the road doing some golf schools out and about this summer. If you're interested or would like information, go to adambgolf.com and reach out. Well, the key to me before we get started with our three drills is always bear in mind, what am I trying to make happen? Not what am I necessarily trying to do with my body? That comes into it. But what am I trying to make happen? And that's simple. We're trying to get the club to come a little from the inside. Let's say that's the target line roughly onto the target line where the ball is, staying fairly low through the ball and deliver a blow to the back of the ball. That's where that little bend in the right wrist for the right-handed golfer comes in. So a tip for you before we go to our three drills, relate to the golf club, relate to the task at hand, and you will get much more natural outcomes, much quicker progress. Okay, my first two drills are really mental pictures, and you don't have to have the equipment I'm going to show you. They're just good mental pictures. Take a tennis ball, and from a golf posture or some such ball, roll it along the ground. Get it to go out there and roll along the ground like that. Similarly, if you took a paintbrush and you imagine a low bench in front of you, could you paint a fairly long stripe if you had wet paint on the brush? I think almost anybody could in one try. I don't think anybody would accidentally do that. And here's the key. Of course, you have to have that bent, you have to have pressure in the bristles. What would your lower body do if you had to keep the brush on the ground? I think you'd see that it would roll this way, and in order to keep you down, you'd get that roll into the right knee. Simply what I want you to do next is take a golf club, I have an eight on, just do something very small, avoid the temptation to hit the golf ball, we're just bumping it out there. Can I use this effectively, a long paintbrush, to paint a little stripe on the grass like that? That's the sort of feel. We'll get into some checkpoints in a minute, but let's look at drill number three. Okay, final drill, driver and a pitching wedge. Grip the top head or the club head end of the driver and just put the shaft against the ground about opposite your lead foot there. Take your pitching wedge, choke most of the way down with your trail arm. Here's the drill. This is about keeping some spine angle as you do this. A lot of times people start to get their legs working and their head and spine angle go all over the place. Here's the, here's the drill for it. Make some mini swings underneath your lead arm and you are pretty much assured, you'll really feel it if you don't do it, that you keep your spine angle. Couple of checkpoints. Number one, can you make a nice long brush against the turf? So I've chosen some spongy turf, a nice long brush mark that shows you're keeping the trail wrist bent, you're keeping the low spot of the swing moving. And number two, if you were to look up, would you be on a bit of a tilt with your eyes like that? We're not suggesting in golf, you have to stare into your divot hole, but as you go through, initially, you should be on somewhat of a tilt. Great drill. Well, medium shot there, we'll have to live with it. Okay, checkpoints, and let me just say, I'll offer you a few here. These are general checkpoints. The best checkpoints are going to come from you because you're the one that has to feel it for yourself and feel it, of course, in your own body. So let's hit a couple of little shots as you do this, just small ones. I've got an eight iron here, just to about that sort of point, not all the way to three o'clock, somewhere in this area, 4.30 or so on the face. I would notice certainly that my trail knee is fairly close to my lead knee. My trail foot is rolled in quite a bit. I'm beginning to feel my heel lift up just a little bit. The other thing I tend to notice with this is when I do it, I feel a good pressure in my left hip and left glute there. That means the weight's there. Things are squeezing back against it a little bit. 
And finally, when you do this, people tend to just watch the ball and not pay attention to themselves. Hit the little shot, certainly you'll notice the ball. Are these roughly in position? Has the club flipped up in the air? The best thing, however, is for you to get in front of a mirror, for you to do a couple of these little paintbrush and tennis ball type drills. If you like the way it looks on your phone or in front of the mirror, chart for yourself some checkpoints, some feel checkpoints that you can relate to. They'll be the best ones. Best of luck with this. Thanks for watching. Leave a question or comment below. Uh, appreciate you being part of Scratch Golf Academy.